Yesterday, December 9th, 2023, we had ourselves a tornado outbreak, mostly in Kentucky and Tennessee, but we had some tornadoes in the western portion of the Florida Panhandle as well. Two most notable tornadoes were the ones that went through Clarksville, Tennessee, and then the one that went through the Nashville, Hendersonville area. Our storm chaser, Caleb Beecham, was there for both of them, and he actually got uh, broad daylight uh, footage of the Clarksville tornado. He immediately shifted targets and went after the Nashville tornado and also provided coverage for us live on YouTube last night and now he's still there talking to emergency managers and officials in the area to see how the y'all squad can help our nonprofit organization thanks to you guys last night uh, raised about thirty thousand dollars so we're sending Chandra down there and a bunch of other people from the y'all squad uh, to, to put that money to good use and we're just trying to figure out what's needed from us so far the damage looks pretty extensive so we might need more if you can obviously you don't have to do this but if you can, it would really help us out if you submitted a monetary donation to our official 501c3 nonprofit organization, the Y'all Squad. You can do that on the theyallsquad.org. You can donate one time or monthly. It can be a custom amount, $10, whatever you can. And we will use every penny to help people affected by severe weather. Thank you guys for allowing us to do that. But while our main goal right now is working together to try to help these people out in Tennessee, uh, the storm's not over yet. In fact, today there's another slight risk of severe weather in portions of Florida, Georgia, and especially up into the Carolinas and southeastern portions of Virginia. This is mainly driven by a damaging wind threat, but of course, there is a 5% probability for an isolated tornado or two over here, especially in eastern North Carolina. Here's what the radar could look like around noon today. You can see we've got a lot of showers and a couple thunderstorms, especially the farther south you go, stretching all across the eastern part of the U.S. This is the cold front that's associated with our big storm that caused the tornadoes yesterday yesterday and will cause the heavy snow in the northeast tonight and into tomorrow. But for today specifically, we're watching uh, this area right here for the very real threat for some additional severe weather. You can see how some supercells are trying to pop up out to sea. You can see how we've got some embedded cells back here. Nothing as intense as what we saw yesterday because things are pretty muddied up by the uh, just the massive amount of convection that's happening out there. There's not a lot of room for discrete supercells, but still some straight line damaging winds and uh, maybe an isolated tornado or two are going to be possible here uh, as this cold front comes through. And it's going to happen in waves. We're going to have one early. We're going to have one in the mid-afternoon and then one late this evening uh, that's probably going to come through uh, around 8 p.m. through midnight. And that's the one that could probably have the strongest winds with it uh, before we actually see this whole line of storms exit the Carolinas by around 5 a.m. And actually, this would be a big tornado producer if all of these storms were over land. So all the really good tornado ingredients are kind of out to sea. So the fish are going to be experiencing a water spout outbreak, but thankfully uh, most of the inland areas will be spared. But we can't rule out a tornado or two, so make sure you are paying attention to those watches and warnings. And I know you guys are noticing all that blue up there as we head into the evening hours tonight. Uh, the backside of our major storm system is going to start getting cold enough to produce snow in the Appalachian Mountains up into the northeast. And this snow is going to be heavy at times. Northern Virginia into East Pennsylvania, upstate New York around 3 a.m. on Monday. You guys are going to get pounded by snow. The heaviest snow will probably fall in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and especially in northwestern and just generally northern portions of Maine. And we're going to talk about how much snow we're looking at here very soon, but I want to draw your attention back to the warm sector, the rainy side. Look at how much rain is falling along the I-95 corridor here. Although we are going to get blasted with a quick hitting band of snow in Washington and Baltimore uh, and maybe even in Philadelphia, the vast majority of us all the way up through Boston are going to be dealing with uh, really heavy rain and also some strong winds. You can see the low pressure center, uh, how it's got this comma head shape to it. All of the really strong winds are going to be up in this area and they're going to move through the northeast coast as we go through the morning on Monday. And man, some of these winds could be really strong. Even though the thunderstorms are going to be down here in the ocean, there's still going to be hurricane force winds in and around the central area of low pressure. I should probably clarify and say that we're talking 
talking about hurricane force wind gusts. So it's not going to be sustained winds, but uh, already by 7 p.m. tonight, places in Long Island, uh, Connecticut, uh, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts will be seeing uh, 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts before the heart of the storm even moves in. But watch how that increases as we go into the early morning hours on Monday. And then boom, that big, the really strong area of high winds are going to be moving in around 10 a.m. on Monday. And out to sea here, we're talking about 80, 90, maybe even 100 mile per hour wind gusts. And a little bit of that may nose its way onto the tip of Long Island over towards Cape Cod with uh, some 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts possible uh, during the morning on Monday. That's going to get even more widespread and significant over there in the on the coast of Maine and especially up into New Brunswick and Nova Scotia in Canada. You guys are going to be seeing hurricane force wind gusts uh, throughout the day on Monday, it seems. So power outages and some coastal flooding are definitely going to be uh, in the cards. Uh, but even farther back here where we're only seeing 20 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts, this may produce intermittent blizzard conditions because of all the snow we're going to be seeing. Latest run of the HRRR model shows us where the heaviest snow will fall. We're going to see a general one to three inches of snow uh, from Pennsylvania down into North Carolina. Most of that's going to be in the higher elevations. The valleys have a better chance of seeing snow in Pennsylvania. Uh, same thing for you guys up here in upstate New York, three to six inches higher in the higher elevations. Uh, but the real jackpot winners here, if you like snow, uh, according to the HRRR model, are going to be upstate uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and of course, uh, Maine. Uh, but there's going to be a very sharp dividing line between who sees rain and who sees snow. And you could literally go just a couple of miles and be no snow to a foot of snow. Now, rain, on the other hand, we're going to be getting a lot of that. One to three inches across a lot of the mid-Atlantic region. And then in New England, we could see some two to four inch uh, ranges of rainfall and maybe even a couple areas, especially in Connecticut, um, Rhode Island and Massachusetts and Southern Maine that see up to six inches of rain in a pretty short period of time. So that could cause uh, flash flooding on top of the strong winds that we have to be concerned about up here. And what about after that? Looking forward into the future, of course, uh, our main thing over the next couple of days is going to be this storm system that will be exiting the United States to the east. Uh, it'll be completely out of our hair by Tuesday, early in the morning, around 1 or 2 a.m. And then we're going to have a brief period of quietness. Uh, honestly, nothing's going to be happening anywhere in the country that's significant on uh, the majority of the day on Tuesday. And uh, that's going to continue into Wednesday. There's going to be a little bit of uh, Gulf of Mexico moisture that's going to try to move up here into Texas and then uh, over into New Mexico and Colorado and Kansas. This is actually going to stick around for a while, which will be good for the drought. But the rest of us are going to be having fun in the sun. It's going to be quite nice, honestly, <laughs> for most of us, uh, except for in the deep south down there where some rain's going to be trying to move up into Florida, uh, Georgia, South Carolina. This is when things start looking like it's going to get active again, maybe around Sunday, December 17th, where uh, that area of low pressure that's caused all the rain back here is now trying to turn into a full-fledged storm system and ride up the coast. If that happens, then we might see some snow in the Appalachian Mountains and some more heavy rain and wind all the way up the northeast coast, and that is actually going to pull down some more cold air to uh, get rid of the nice weather. Of course, it's December. We should expect it. And then after that, there's going to be a couple more instances of storm systems that come in. Uh, things still look pretty active, but honestly, beyond uh, the 200-hour mark in a uh, uh, forecast is all uh, kind of just a guess, you know, um, forecast models aren't that good yet, but it does show some activity around Christmas. Uh, and my next video on the main channel is going to be, uh, you know, who's going to see a white Christmas this year. So that'll be fun. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you share this video everywhere so we can get the information out. Uh, also, thank you to everybody that's donated to the y'all squad.org. There's a link at the top of the description. Uh, if you want to go contribute to that, it would mean a lot to us. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.